what the hell happened in the morning? And you can contextualize this however you want. Sure. No, I mean, what happened was, you know, like I played a bunch of these tournaments, not, not of ones quite this size, but I'd still played a lot of tournaments at this point. And I was there before, before it actually started. Usually I, people turn up late, but for some reason I was there in my chair before the first hand was dealt. And I remember they, the, the company PokerStars, whose event it was, you know, they dimmed the lights. They're like, welcome to EPT San Remo, huge, we've got an incredible field, blah, blah, blah. And then they, they dimmed the lights and they put on, on the screens around the room, just like a promo, exciting. Promo you know, video. Promo video, you know. And I remember distinctly the music. It was Chemical Brothers, Hey Boy, Hey Girl, which I always loved. I always loved that song. Yeah, good choice. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, I'm excited. And while I was just like listening to it, just like out of nowhere, this like, it's like a bolt of lightning felt like. It was like this like, and this voice in my head said, you are going to win this tournament. And it sounded like my own voice. But what I can't remember is whether it was, I am going to win or you are going to win. But I'm pretty sure it was you are going to win. But it literally sounded like my own voice. And it was sounded so... Sounded like your own voice. Yes. So it was like, the, you know, when you speak in your head, like the, the voice you hear, like, at least I think most people have that, right? Like, <laughs> 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 you know, that Tuesday voice that everyone hears. <laughs> oh man, I'm learning, learning a lot out here. Um, just, you know, uh, it, it sounded like how I would s sound in my own head yes, to, to myself. And it said, you are going to win this tournament. And I got this rush of goosebumps, like really, like, the, oh, you know, it's even happening a little bit, like the hairs up on my arms to the point where I was like, what? And I remember looking around the room, like, did, did I just say that out loud? Did anyone else hear this? And everyone else was just like in their phones or whatever. And I was like, well, that was freaky. Then the lights came back up and they're like, okay, cool, shuffle up and deal. And I was still like stunned and I was like, okay cool and then I sort of a little bit forgot about it but then like halfway through the day I got in a big pot and I lost half my chips and you know it's, it's always a bad feeling when that happens and I was like oh man I'm nearly out of the tournament I guess that was bullshit you know so like I had like little multiple moments over the next few days where I you know I, I it clearly was a real thing because I, I like checked in on it you know and I was like mm -hmm. oh this and I even told a friend of mine on what date. do you mean check checked in on it well, meaning you remembered that it had happened that it had happened well because obviously the rational explanation to this is that like it was just a false memory you know mm -hmm. that I have retroactively remembered something that didn't really happen right, so as a way of you like making it. exactly but, but you I have multiple it. points at which you referred to it yes and i even have a friend my, my my friend melanie who was there and i bumped into her in the in the women's bathroom on like day two and she's like oh you got a lot of chips it's going well i was like yeah yeah uh things are going well really weird i feel like I'm, I'm gonna win this in fact i like i almost had a premonition that i did and she's like yeah you seem really confident and we actually had this conversation and to the point that she after i won it she was like what the fuck was that you you like predicted this hmm. i'm like I, I know i don't know so yeah <laughs> i don't know how to explain it now i think you said string or series of experiences is that type of experience in poker isolated to that or I should, and it doesn't have to be constrained to poker. Right. I'm just wondering what other stories you may have that. Well, I, so I had a few, so it, what was interesting was after Actually, I. Actually, may I ask, a, uh, mm -hmm. I apologize for doing this herky-jerky questioning style, but did you have any of those types of experiences when you were younger? No. That you recall? No. No. I was not like a weird kid that, or, you know, that had... Sorry, let me You're start a weird again. Kid. You weren't like the kid from The Sixth Sense. No, I wasn't The Sixth Sense kid, no. Uh, <laughs> no, I did not, is to answer that question. Okay, I had not really ever had, I think, anything. You know, like I never saw a ghost or anything <laughs> like that. I'm not asking about ghosts. I mean, <laughs> well, to don't me, lump me in with the ghost hunters, come on. <laughs> I don't, but that... To, I want to just paint the picture of that right. I was a very, in fact, like a deep skeptic. Right. Well, you still are a deep skeptic in a lot right, of ways. Right, right. Yeah. But like certainly then, like I'd never had anything weird that I couldn't really explain okay. in it. any conventional way. I'd certainly not had any time loops or, or yeah. anything like that or weird voices in my head. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, to answer your question of like, is it a sort of common thing in poker? No, not so much common thing in poker, but have you since had more of those types of experiences? Not of like explicit premonitions, no. I'm not, nothing even close to that. I have had one really notable thing that is 
yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I am happy to talk about it. It's, if you change your mind, we can cut it later. Exactly. <laughs> For want of a better word, I had an extreme energy healing, an almost accidental one. So it was a few years ago, and seemingly out of the blue, I started getting this very unpleasant sensation in my ear, where particularly it was like a sort of low frequency buzzing, humming quite frequently, like so, so some some kind of tinnitus. Yeah but it was almost like a pressure and voices, particularly men's voices became distorted to the point that they were unbearable to listen to. And it was really bumming me out because it, it would come in like clusters. I would have it like for a few hours and it would go away and come later on in the day. And it, it was stopping me from doing any social events because any, any loud scenario was unbearable, but particularly men speaking, I just couldn't handle it. And this went on and off for a few months and I went and saw a doctor multiple doctors and had hearing tests and they said, oh, you're losing your hearing and the, the low frequencies of your, of your hearing in that ear. We think you have many ears disease. Many ears is this degenerative thing, which usually people end up completely deaf when they have it, where basically the, the nerve cells in, in the inner ear start dying and they don't really know why. They think it's something to do with like salts and ion channels and it's incurable as far as I know. And and so I was told that's what I probably have. And they were like, we're really sorry. It's, you know, it was just bad news to find that out. And also because one of the s s uh, symptoms of it is you start having uh, balance problems as well. You get like these vertigo attacks and people be like vomiting and so on. And so you can imagine, I was like really down in the dumps finding this out. And then cut to three months later or so, I uh, go to Burning Man and I have for the first time one of these vertigo attacks on one of, the, one of the days. I mean, I wasn't completely sober, but um, it was not a good time, as you can imagine, having a vertigo attack while not being sober for the first time. So I was then really down in the dumps. And then on the last night of the burn, I was talking to some, you know, some friends and I started talking to this girl who I kind of, I don't know that well, but she's a friend of a friend. And I mentioned about my ear and she's like, oh, well, I, I do energy healing. I'm an energy healer. And I was like, Pfft. I, I don't know what that is, but sure, do whatever you want to do. Yeah, have a go. She's like, I, I can try. And she sort of put her hand over my ear for a few minutes. And then she says, I remember saying something like, there's something there, I need to get it. And she starts sucking over my ear with her mouth, like not touching it, but just like, Pfft. and it was really unpleasant. Because I was like, you, know, you can imagine that sensation of someone like inhaling over your ear. And I was like, oh, please stop. She's like, no, I need to get this. There's something there. And she does it, I don't know, for a few minutes and then eventually kind of <laughs> collapses in a heap on the floor crying and freezing cold going oh my god that was that was bad i don't know what that was that was really really bad uh, and i <laughs> again i was not fully sober so this is a slightly uh, you know retelling but i just remember being so shocked because i i just didn't expect anything to actually happen I didn't really feel anything other than this like unpleasant sensation of her sucking but i was so shocked at the way she was now reacting because she was shocked. She, 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 she did not seem to expect whatever had, had just happened to her. And she said afterwards, she, you know, she came around after a little while and she's like, I don't know what it was. It was like bad energy. I don't know. It's gone. I'm very pleased to say it's fully gone and it's, it's gone away. And I was like, well, okay, what does that mean for my symptoms? Am I cured? She's like, yeah, yeah, you'll probably have symptoms for a couple more weeks and then you'll be fine. And that's exactly what happened. And I haven't had any problems since. So... Yeah, I don't know. And, yeah. uh, uh, it kind of just blew my world open because aside of that premonition thing, which I'd kind of forgotten about, I have not ever subscribed to anything like that. I, like, I'm a physicist. In fact, like, you know, I'm proud, like, I kind of built a career of being a like, materialist, rationalist physicist. <laughs> and I don't have any time for any of that stuff. It's all nonsense. It's all confirmation bias. You know, like no one's ever actually tested it empirically or proven it, you know, like show me the study and I'll believe it. But here I am having that experience with like two, what feel like pretty incontrovertible data points that something that I cannot explain happened and fortunately were incredibly beneficial to me, like such a blessing. So yeah. 